The massive rescued effort to save Katrina survivors was filled with ordinary people banding together to do extraordinary things. That's what happened in St. Bernard Parish, where thousands of people waited for days on a dock for help. Well, you know what, Tom, today Paul Murphy actually caught up with one of the guys who came up with the idea on how to evacuate those people, and he was saying how he knew this was a life-or-death mission. This warehouse at the Araby Marine Terminal is where more than 5,000 St. Bernard residents ended up after Katrina. Almost everyone in the parish of 68,000 at the time lost everything when floodwaters from the hurricane swallowed up their subdivisions. This is the port. Cookie and Emil Dumbron from Chalmette were among the evacuees waiting on the Mississippi River dock for days for help to arrive. Everybody was crying. Everybody wanted to go home. And we're told we couldn't go home. We didn't even have a home. Nobody knew we were underwater. Nobody knew. Human. That's hard to believe. Attorney and business leader Walter Leger eventually learned about the plight of the St. Bernard evacuees. The Arabi native traveled to Baton Rouge to demand that state emergency response officials come up with a plan to rescue them. I was pretty emotional and pretty intense, but they were ready. You know, they, it was not like I had to, you know, fight to, to get help. Uh, they were, I think they were trying to figure out a way to get help down here. Together, they hatched a plan to commandeer ferry boats docked at Algiers Point to carry the evacuees to safety. While everyone was anxious to get the ferries here and get people out, uh, we, we had to organize them in such a fashion that there were buses waiting for them in, you know, at the Algiers Ferry. The Dembrons admit they didn't know when or if they would be rescued. They took some pictures on the dock and inside the warehouse where they spent several sleepless nights lying on stacks of plywood. It was horrible. That's all I could say. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. Till the boats came, you, you, just, you just was there surviving. And then once the boats come, well, then you felt like you were back in motion, getting better. Leger led the rescue mission from a pilot boat that traveled downriver with the ferries. He described the scene as the ferries pulled up to the dock. They, they looked like zombies. They were, you know, thirsty. They were hungry. They were exhausted. Uh, they were frightened. It was, it was a pretty, uh, pretty desperate sight. It was a big relief when we saw them boats because, like I said, they were supposed to come by boats and they were supposed to come by helicopters, and then. Uh, uh, the wildlife and fishery was supposed to bring their boats, and they never did show up. You can see the skyline of New Orleans just upriver from here at the Port of Araby. Leger says part of the problem is much of the national attention was focused over there in those days immediately following Katrina, not here in St. Bernard, where there was devastation everywhere you looked. Not only were they here for a few days, they had been under the stress and strain of actually surviving the hurricane and either climbing on their roofs or being rescued by St. Bernard Parish Sheriff's deputies. When I got from the attic into the boat and saw just rooftops going down to Judge Perez, all our kids lost everything. That's the part that really hurt. Now, 10 years later, Leger remembers the rescue mission as a team effort of people doing what they had to do to save lives. From the state perspective, it was really impressive that the governor was able to commandeer buses from up in North Louisiana, eventually get the bus drivers to get them down here and get them down here to Algiers. And then at the same time, we were able to, to coordinate uh, acquisition uh, of, of ferries to, to, to continue on the rescue that was done by St. Bernard deputies and, uh, and, and St. Bernard firefighters. Well, I kept saying thank you, Mr. Leger, because I, I, like Emil said, we would have been forgotten. We, we would have just stayed at the port because we never had nowhere to get out. Thank yeah. God for those boats. Paul Murphy, Eyewitness News. And a bit of a footnote, the De Bruns, they did spend some time in Baton Rouge after the storm, but they eventually made it back to Chalmette along with a lot of their relatives. All right, thanks, Karen. And the president